Thanks for tuning in again. This is Small World. It's a proud part of the lecture series. This is Dave Ashcraft, father of four, constantly finding myself giving life lessons in the way of lectures to my children. I'm here to help you as well. Question for you. What are the two most dangerous times during an airplane flight? Natty Pie. Take off and landing. Take off and sitting next to me. Oh. <laughs> and here's why. Because I have a little game I like to play, Natty. Mm -hmm. It's called Small World. My goal when I'm on the plane is I want to talk to the person next to me and try to make a connection with them, find some similarity, and I'll ask them questions. Uh, we find somebody that we know, and they say, wow, it's a small world. So, here's my question, Natty Pie. I have a reward opportunity for you. Yes, I was able to win the small world game during three recent flights. Can you guess, and you don't have to tell me this now, you can just write it down somewhere in your head, guess the total number of questions I had to ask during the three flights. So this is not the questions per flight, it's all together. Take all three flights and the number of questions. I'll start with Seattle to Chicago, right there. Mm -hmm. I, uh, what I like to do when I get on the plane, if you've seen the seven plane tips, you know that I get on the plane last. So I like to get on last, I like to come down the aisle, I like to look at everybody and see how miserable they are for sitting on the plane 45 minutes waiting for me to get on so they can close the gate. I cruise on down and what I found generally, the more miserable a person looks, the more they want to talk. Mm -hmm. And so with that person I might engage and say, um, you having a rough day? And like, oh, it's the worst day ever. And I would say, oh, tell me about that. And that's how I get them talking. Well, this gentleman, I sit down, and he's got the headphones on. He's got the laptop up. He's clearly in the don't talk to me position. And I'm a little concerned about winning Small World on this flight to Chicago. Um, but I'm not an amateur at this. I've been doing this 10 years. So I go, you know, the guy's got to eat sometime. Sure enough, we're two hours in the flight, and here comes the food cart. The person next to me takes the headphones off. Time to strike like a viper. Like number two on the fears list right there, like a little viper snake. So I look over at the gentleman who hasn't looked at me the entire flight, hoping he wouldn't have to talk to anybody. And I said, uh, hey, so are you from Seattle or Chicago? He goes, I live in Seattle. So, now question number two. Are you staying in Chicago? Yes, I'm staying in Chicago. He's giving me the short answers. So i got to ask some more open-ended questions. Question number three. Well, what are you doing in Chicago? Oh, I'm going to a global sales meeting. Yeah. Question number four. Well, what do you do? And he goes, I guess, I'm in logistics. And in my mind, I go, oh, that's funny. I have a twin brother who's in logistics. And as the guy in the middle seat starts to close his laptop, on top of his laptop, it says, Siva Logistics. This gentleman looks at me because my identical twin brother worked at Siva Logistics, and this guy worked with my twin brother. And uh, Bill Schneider looks at me and he says, Are you Tom Ashcraft, who worked at Siva Logistics? I go, no, I'm not Tom Ashcraft. I'm his twin brother, Dave Ashcraft. And he says, wow, it's such a small world. There you go. Yeah, that's what they call it, small world. Small world yeah. Boom, four questions on that one. So I'm going to Seattle to Houston. Get on in Seattle. Last one on. Get my window seat where I like to sit, exit row, mm -hmm. so I can be the first one off in case this thing crashes. And, uh, the gentleman next to me has Alaska flight tags on. And I think, huh, how am I going to engage with this guy and win this small world game? Mm -hmm. well, let's come up with something different this time. I normally ask people if they're flying to Houston, or if they're from Seattle. But I said, this one I go, are you part of the maintenance crew that's supposed to be fixing the engine on the plane that's stuck on the tarmac in Houston and the pilots told them it's only going to be an hour or two before somebody comes and saves them? The he goes like, <laughs> no, I'm not part of the maintenance crew. I'm with hotel committee. You're with hotel committee. Do you know Jim Ritchie? He goes, I do. I've known Jim Ritchie for over 10 years. We're on hotel committee together. It is such a 
Oh my gosh, what do they say? Small world. <laughs> That's yours truly at Phoenix Outdoor Animal Zoo. Here's the guy who was sitting next to me. He is a customer service legend at Alaska Airlines. He tells me there's not a person that works at Alaska Airlines that is a flight attendant that doesn't know who he is because he's done training for the last 10 years. Do you mind if I get your email address? Sure. I put it in my phone. Why do you think I put it in my phone? Because if I ever experience a lack of customer service, I can drop Jimmy's name and say, I'm happy to email him if you have any questions about how to exceed my customer service expectations. That was two questions to get to the small world. We have LA to Seattle. Guy comes on, he's got black leather jacket, black pants, black hat, shaved hair on the side, fully tatted up, plug earrings, and I'm thinking I might not have a lot in common with my boy sitting next to me, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm sizing him up and I'm thinking about how I'm going to engage with my neighbor. Sure enough, here comes a flight attendant down to take the pre-order on the drinks. She says, hey, what would you guys like to drink? And about halfway through, she's like this, hey, you. And she's pointing at me. Do you have a twin brother? I go, I do. I have an identical twin brother. Does he have identical twins? I, he does. Do they play golf? They do. Oh my gosh, my son plays golf with your twin brother's daughters. And so then she disappears. And I look at the gentleman next to me. And I say, uh, I know I don't know you, but I'm on the verge of setting a record for a game I play. Do you want to hear about it? He goes, sure. So I explain how Small World works. And he goes like this, oh, wow, that is, that's neat. That's a fun game. He says, uh, what, what are you going to do if she comes back and she doesn't say it's a Small World? I go, oh, you know, humans like to win. They like to guess stuff. So if she comes back, I'll go like this, oh, my gosh, what is it that they say when you know people? And oftentimes people go, it's six degrees separation. And just for fun, you go, no, no, I don't think it's six degrees of separation. It's something else. And they go, oh, 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 it's, um, it's, uh, and they go, it's not a big, it's, uh, and they go, it's a small world. They go, yeah, there you go. It's a small world. So my neighbor next to me is like this. Okay, let's see how this thing goes down. So here comes the flight attendant. She looks in the seat and without prompting, she looks at me and she goes, it is such a small world. There you go. And my neighbor raises his hand in the up position for the high five. And I give my boy a high five. Guess what? Turns out he's a huge Seahawks fan. He's from, and he's a Christian rocker. Would not have known he's a Christian rocker. Dad was a pastor and he went to seminary school. Do not judge a book by a cover. That's why you play small world because you never know who's going to be sitting next to you. And that one I had to take a picture of the flight attendant. There she is, Wendy, lovely Wendy. And then you'll notice in the back here, that's a photo bomber. She has expensive taste. And speaking of small world, I was doing a program in Austin, Texas, for about a couple hundred people in the audience. And after the show, somebody comes up and they're from Minnesota. And they said, I know the person with the purses. She's a fashion designer. Oh. Yeah. I go, well, she's a fashion designer or she's something else. A member of Jack and Nick Production getting in my photo. <laughs> so that was zero. Natty Pie, how many questions did you think it was going to be? Five. Five? Oh, my gosh. You give me a lot of credit there. It was a total of six. Okay. So now why do you want to play Small World, Natty? Uh, number one, you can meet more people. And if you meet more people, that is going to benefit you. And also, you can improve your self-awareness. So if you have things that you're working on, you can be aware of your style. And so if you're a shy person, it's a nice stretch and grow exercise to meet more people. And you can practice asking questions. And the thing is, you cannot win small world unless you're a really good listener. Because you can't ask questions unless you listen to what people say. What you want to do is every time they share something about themselves, continue to ask questions. Something else that's fun is if you're bad at names, you can practice names on a plane. Because everybody forgets names on a plane. But I do not. And that is why you do not want to sit next to me. Right into it, I'll go, oh, what's your name? And you'll say, it's Natty Pie. And I go, oh my gosh, Natty Pie, that's a really 
you know, cute name. Do you mind if I call you Pi? And uh, you say, sure, sure, what's your name? I go, it's David. And then about five minutes later, I'll be like, so Natty, you're from Oklahoma, huh? And I'll go, so Natty, you uh, look after some kids, huh? Oh, so Natty, you got some wiener dogs, huh? And after a while, I can tell you get a little uneasy because you do not know my name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of that self-awareness, that's, it leads into social awareness. The social awareness is that people are naturally bad at names. And so I, I'll, I'll do that for a little bit, but then I'll say, hey, my name is Dave, in case you forgot it. Um, self-awareness, uh, whether you need to work on listening or if you need to work on letting people finish their sentences, just all little things that you might have gotten feedback from at, at work when people talk about uh, whether you're good at listening or good at communications with people. And then number three, self-management. So if there's things that you're working on in regards to self-management, you can apply it on the small world game and on the airplane. And then number four, social awareness. What happens on this one on social awareness? There's a similarity principle at work when you're on a plane. And that's why you can meet really fun people on a plane, because you have something in common. You're stuck in a miserable spot that a lot of people are afraid of. So you can find a bond on if they're afraid of the plane, if they're claustrophobic, if they're afraid of when their next cocktail is coming. Uh, and so from that, if you meet more people, they're more willing to introduce you to opportunities because you're not a close friend. You'll find that your close friends do not uh, introduce you to opportunities because they're afraid that you might make them look bad. Uh, we're on the plane, people are like, oh, hey, I like you, I like this, I will introduce you and make connections. So it's a great place to make connections. Uh, so that's part of that social awareness. And then uh, number five, there is relationship management. And so relationship management is, okay, if you do meet somebody, what is their name? Are you going to follow up with them? Could this lead to a bigger opportunity? Fun, you know, as far as when it says you could get lucky, I have found myself going to shows in Vegas, going to the back room with the performers because my wife did the small world routine. By the time we got off the plane, we were invited to go see a rock show, uh, which was great. I sat next to a guy who worked at Disney World, and he gave me his first class upgrade when I was coming back from Chicago. And then uh, certainly lots of business opportunities as far as getting lucky. And you don't know, you might meet your next significant relationship or they'll do the introduction for you because people are like oh my gosh you're super fun you should meet one of my friends friends or something like that so that is why you want to play small world thank you for joining me for this video and then catch some of the other ones if you like the video give it the thumbs up and then you can check these other uh, lecture series small world <laughs>